Greetings fellow farmers, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Land of the Vikings, Episode 2, Settled Life. Another thing to note is I'm starting to get food stockpiled in the warehouse. So we have six fruits there, they're counted up here, keeping people fed. So good job, Bothfield, for, for resupplying. And then both of those... Oh, the warehouse worker fell ill as well. Haldora. Fine, I'll put another person in there then. Oh, was that... Sibjorn! Oh, interesting! He recovered. Uh, despite the lack of herbs, the guy that was the gatherer uh, recovered from his illness and now will work in the warehouse. Haldora, you're fired. My gatherers, however, are having a hell of a time trying to find uh, herbs. Oh, there we go. We found it. We just found two. So, the objective is done. Treatments is complete. The next objective is a much bigger one. Um, transition to settled life. So, this is the first that we'll be using the Tree of Life, which is the unlock or research tree. And we will want to build a field, a well, order wheat production, assign a farmer, build a wheat granary, build a windmill, assign a miller, and produce first bread. Um, there is also a secondary one, which is increase village population, have more than eight houses in your village, and reach a total population of 40 villagers. Uh, up here... There are newcomers arriving in the village, and I can click this early to admit them now, or to agree that they, or, or disagree that they are allowed in, or I could just wait for the one day five hours, and in this case I'm going to wait. Uh, are there different diseases? I don't think so. I think it's just a general health bar, but I could be wrong. Um, so, the Tree of Life. The research tree it looks like this. So the transition to settled life is here. It costs three points out of the ten that we have. Uh, tree of life points are earned by increasing fame. Fame is required. Uh, the fame required for a new point is a thousand. This isn't exactly true. Uh, you get other tree of life points like periodically in other way methods, but whatever. Uh, so we're gonna explore transition to settled life, which unlocks fields, wheat granary, all that stuff that we need to build. And you can see up here, we can dig it too deep, which is um, which is mining stone pit stone cutter for dressed stone. So what I want to do is um, lay out farm fields. So farm fields generally are going to be centered around a well uh, so that they can be watered occasionally. And I kind of like... This spot, actually. This is not a bad spot for our first farm. I'm going to have to do some land clearing, but I'm going to put a well out there. I like that spot. And then once the well is built, uh, I will start laying out the farm fields. So the way to lay out farm fields, they can be of any particular shape. They don't need to be square or whatever. Uh, so that you can sort of have them fit into the terrain well. Uh, the big thing is that you need them to be on pretty much flat ground. So I will give you an example of this, where if I try to put a farm here, there's a height error because it's too steep. Right? Uh, so nice flat open ground is going to be ideal. There's also a maximum size to them. So if I put like... A farm here, as you can see, it doesn't go all the way back to the mountain, although I can have it extend. The other thing is, for every square foot of farmland, um, it costs silver. So at this point, I am just too poor to be able to afford this farm. But I'm not going to be building the farm next. I'm going to wait for me to get a little bit more money so that we can build a larger farm. So the other things that we're going to want, uh, besides the well 
is the wheat granary where we store the wheat should be close to the farm and then the windmill where we can mill the wheat into flour for bread which should be stored near the farm and near the wheat granary um but i'm gonna ignore that for the moment because we have immigration coming in and i don't have housing for everybody so if i take a look at the uh the wells sphere of influence what it can start to do is to plan on building organic looking burrows in our village rather than like a grid pattern. So I'm going to put a cluster of houses up here. And these houses will be good for the farmers to work in and also the gatherer that's up in the woods. And I'm going to have different uh, styled houses. There's... They're... they're pretty much cosmetically different. There's not a lot of difference between the types of housing that I'm putting in, right? They all cost the same. They house the same. They just look a bit different for variety. And that's how I'm going to lay out the housing. The plan is to have a path running uh, up the middle and over to the gatherer's hut once I have the silver for it. So the goal is to have at least eight houses, and this brings my total up to seven. Uh, I'm going to start with a new cluster of houses around the marketplace as well. And I'm going to prioritize this house and then start to prioritize one at a time these houses. Polygon is the best gone. Are you a CGP Grey fan? Um, they actually... You can have them be, like, you know, weird shit. I mean, they're always going to be polygons, but you can have them be pretty weird shaped, too. Which is nice. Oh, people are starting to buy, uh, buy food from our markets, making us a little bit of silver income. Trees uh, that have been cut down will sprout again unless a construction is built in that area. So that, that's tool tip. If I put a road to the gatherer's hut, even through its block, will the gatherers jump on the road? Yeah, typically the villagers that you have follow roads pretty well, um, especially given the organic nature of the roads. As you can see here, like this villager is following the road pretty closely. I've played a lot of um, settlement games with sort of organic road mechanics like this one, and have found that like a lot of those games, they just use desire paths anyway, even when you put down roads. So this game uh, definitely has them prioritize the roads, as you can see. People, when they're able to walk on roads, do. Right? Pretty good. Because I know of like a dozen games where you can put out roads and then they just ignore them. <laughs> and they walk wherever they want. And you're like, but infrastructure! And they're like, but I'm lazy. Uh, yeah. Alright, this house is almost done. And uh, the result of building this house is likely going to be an additional family because people get married and move in. So right now we have three main families in our village, but uh, I suspect this will jump to four pretty soon. So Sibison from the Sibi family married uh, one from the Uba family. And when they have kids, they'll uh, create their own subfamily unit. But you can actually click and find their familiar homes here. Which is neat. You can see that the houses are not well insulated. Light spilling through. By design. So that's uh, four of the eight houses required. So let's prioritize these one at a time. Because it would be better for them to... It's better to have one built house and four in construction than like five that are in construction, right? So like prioritizing one at a time is going to produce the most housing the quickest for the most part. Um, still, it seems like our, uh, our 
single carpenter is handling the timber, but I should keep an eye on the timber to make sure that they that continues to be true. In six hours, we're going to get some newcomers uh, into the village. We'll see about that in just a second. And the well got built. Water for the fields. You guys are going to be responsible for uh, all of the sort of game prompts. So newcomers or social issues or raids. Etc. And then eventually, once I'm out of the tutorial, you'll be deciding on the Tree of Life as well. Alright. We've got a... Uh, Ulf and a Sibby marrying one another. Taking a look at families. Here they are. So now we're up to five families, because we have five houses. So the Sigvat family... And the Geardman family. I'm sure I'm pronouncing these wrong, but now I'm not Nordic, so whatever. So that's one way to expand your population. The more housing that you offer, the more babies people will have, the more babies that you have. But this is the other way. Uh, newcomers will arrive in your village. So you guys are going to have a choice between admitting them or not. Newcomers were seen coming towards the village. Where they have come from, they were attacked by looters. Several families, including children, were able to escape. Since they could not bring any of their belongings with them, they have to leave everything behind. At the end of their day-long journey, they have reached your village. They need a place to stay and food. They want to join your village. Uh, so, mousing over this, uh, outsiders are welcome in our village. Fame will increase, which means uh, research tree, uh, tree of life points. But also, it might cause new events. Uh, you know, they might not get along. Uh, not doing it says fame is lost. I do believe that is a uh, not true. I think you just don't gain the fame. So the the opportunity to gain fame is lost, but like your actual fame, my eight nine eighty five at top, it doesn't decrease. Uh, but you guys say can join, so we will admit them. All right, here uh, we have a little tooltip. I like that. You shouldn't see this text, but we didn't have to fix the camera, so let's pretend this never happened. Um, I only zoomed in because there's now homeless people. Um, our population has gone up, but there hasn't. There are not homes for them. They don't belong to the families. So, if they were relatives of, like, let's say, Sibby and Revna, they could move into the home, right? There's space. But because they're not family members, they need their own homes. So here is all the new uh, immigrants who now require homes, but lucky for them, I am uh, prioritizing home building. So uh, that will be remedied pretty quickly. <laughs> I like that tooltip. You're not supposed to see this, so let's pretend this never happened. I actually had never seen that before. That's great. Yeah, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Because here's a little Easter egg. Looking back at the uh, objectives, admitting those immigrants will help with our reaching 40 population, um, but having a lot more people start new families will, of course, help as well. So I'm going to increase the builders up to eight. So if I take a look at the um, the villager's occupation, no, that's the wrong tree. The villager occupation tree, which is management, jobs. I have eight laborers, eight builders, one marketer, one warehouse worker. One carpenter, two gatherers, one herbalist. So we're splitting, building, and cutting down trees and stone by about 50-50. We're going to need uh, some stone pretty soon, though. So if I need stone sooner, I'll just uh, go to the longhouse and say, do stone before cutting down trees, because I have plenty of wood and timber. I don't have a lot of stone. We're running low, so I'm prioritizing it now. And you should see that laborers stop cutting down trees back here and start mining instead.
This should help with some of the homelessness. So four out of the five people are now no longer homeless. From a quick glance. Come on, finish it. And I don't think I have any homelessness now. And there's one more house to build. Uh, so back to the bread production goal of getting a field down. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit longer to try to make a little bit more money so I can have a larger farm. The eight houses are done. Cool. And it's been checked off. Nice. Uh, that means I probably don't need as many builders because I don't have any current building projects. So I'm going to reduce my builders down to two so that a lot more people are uh, mining stone and chopping down trees. What, whatever uh, current silver that I have, I'll start setting out the uh, setting up the farm. So let's take a look at the radius of the well. I'm just trying to memorize roughly what the radius is. It doesn't need to perfectly overlap with the field. Just roughly is fine. And there we go. I spent a, a hundred silver, which was uh, like four fifths of what I have, roughly. Or, and then here is our field. It's suitable for planting, and I am going to put four farmers in. Uh, I'm going to select that we are making wheat, and hit the plant button. Do population have individual individual skills? Um, no, they have, like, talents instead, which is luck, strength, speed, and intelligence. Um, not specifically, like, skills. So with the farm field there, my plan is to store the wheat nearby. So I'm going to put a wheat storage here, where this road goes up towards the well, and then I'll also have it fork over towards this cluster of housing, because I'm going to have these cluster of houses um, hopefully be people that work in the farm fields, in the mill, and uh, in the gathering hut. And then the last bit of the task is to put in proper windmill. Uh, most of the places that I want to put in the proper windmill have their collision blocked by trees, so I'm going to have to cut down some trees. Increase the priority of tree cutting. Resources that are on the ground may be lost if they're not transferred to a warehouse or storage. Good point. Let's get another warehouse person. In fact, two, because there's a lot of uh, timber laying on the ground that could be lost from recent uh, big cuts. And then I'll also stop cutting the trees way back yonder as we have plenty of uh, work to be done right in our own backyard. So right next to the the wheat storage, stick a windmill in, and I'm going to put it uh, here. 
where the idea is to have a road going up and over and through. I'll assign a few more workers to that because it's a, it's a bigger project. Here's our farmers. So I have four total farmers. One of them must be... A, or no, actually, only three are currently working. And they are tilling and planting. And lo a lot like Farthest Frontier... I believe the way farming works in this game is that all farmers work everywhere. They're not assigned to a specific farm. So you should hire farmers knowing that that's the case, I guess. And ideally cluster your farms close together so that there's not a lot of travel time. So having like a agricultural district uh, would be ideal, in other words. The warehouse workers are struggling. So, in this little nook, I'm going to put uh, wood storage, if I can fit it. Oh, maybe, maybe it doesn't fit. Maybe I nested things in a bit too much. I'll put it here. So this is just wood storage. Um, next to the carpenter. Makes, makes sense. And we're doing the final construction of the windmill. Nice. Now, there's not really going to be any point for anyone working in the windmill until we actually harvest some of the crop fields. So you have different cycles of the crop fields. Uh, the game will allow you to plant crops even when it's stupid. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, eventually, you get some autom automation here through tree of life upgrades. But um, until you, that happens, you choose when to plant watering happens automatically and you also choose when to harvest but it will have you have this bar up here so what i mean by it will allow you to be stupid is like it will allow you to plant right before winter there's absolutely no way you're going to get any crops yielded if you plant like the last day of fall but the game won't stop you so you have to make some like logical decisions of like does it make sense for me to plant right now because um the game won't again stop you but you will absolutely waste the effort of doing planting. So in this case, you see that the farmers are um, are gathering water from the well and watering the fields because irrigation's not a thing. Vikings are simple creatures. Uh, so having a well nearby is obviously very crucial. And you can probably picture that if the farm didn't necessarily get super close to the well, it would just increase travel time. So it... And then another thing to note is that uh, wells can't be built on top of one another. So, like, the next well I can build has to be outside of the um, the water table, let's call it. So I can build another well over here, meaning that all this area dedicated to farming, which is maybe something I end up doing, but I can't build a well overlapping the original well. It's too close. All right. We do have the windmill up, but I don't have any wheat yet, so I'm not going to bother employing anyone in there because they're not going to be doing anything. Does the log shack need someone? No. It's just uh it's just a spot for people to stack wood. And then the same is true of uh stone. Although I'm not gonna put down a stone storage yet, because I don't know where I'm gonna put my uh my stone cutter. Er. At this point, I might put in some additional housing. Uh, what I might end up doing is starting a new borough of houses near the coast for fishermen.
And because I have a lot of raw resources, I don't mind adding a lot of houses so that we can grow into it. The intention, to be honest, is eventually to d destroy the original houses that I started with because I just don't like where they are or how they're like aligned with the longhouse. So the plan is to nuke the original three and to repurpose the area. And to have this house also have its own sort of natural uh, burrow. Making sure we avoid the eventual farm zone. All right, I'm sure I have laborers that want laboring tasks, so I'll sign it. And once this field gets to roughly around the harvest mark, uh, I'll harvest and put a miller in. Does decor add storage to the wood stockpiles as well? Uh, let's take a look. So here's where it adds. It adds to the warehouse and it adds to the market. And there's also some other structures that we'll add to as well, but not the log storage. It's not like a man storage. It's just a, a pallet, you know, of, of logs, I guess. Are you guys uh, setting fire to... The, these fire pits look a little awkward here. <laughs> I think I found my first arsonist. Belhar, thank you for the resub. So we've got 34 people out of the 40, which is the goal. And the reward for this is silver, a gold, which is a special currency. And then um, a lot of uh, a lot of fame. We do have some homelessness, though, uh, from probably people being born who want to form their own family, or like uh, children that are, you know, entered adulthood that want their own homes. So we'll fix that. There's also people that are hungry. I've noted that, I see it. Um, what I could do in this case is perhaps put another gathering hut in. Uh, further back into the woods. Treating this area as just a gathering area to be left alone by woodcutters. What on earth are you doing back here, though? Just going for a stroll, I think. Because one of the issues is um, the original houses that I had, some of the original houses still have food in them. But because the food is being stockpiled um, in the houses, the newer houses that I'm building won't have access to the food. Which is why people are going a little hungry. And uh, the second gatherer's hut should help with that. And I'll set the priority for the gatherer's hut. It's actually one of the challenges of finding this game. I think that was also true of like when I played Banished and Father's Frontier, which is um, making sure that everybody has food is a little challenging. The amount of farming or fishing that you need to do is a lot. I'm also in a situation right now where I, because I prioritize tree cutting over stone mining, uh, I don't have any stone. Absolute bingo stone meaning that the pre-material phase of this gathering hut can't even be accomplished. So I just changed the priorities there.
So we are early autumn. And then this bar here at the top is the winter season that is coming. This icon means that the crops are ready to be harvested. Um, I'm going to let them grow a little bit more. I think that there is a benefit for it. But once they hit the sort of like ready to be harvested mark, I'll make sure to harvest them well before a winter sets in. And that will also absolutely help to feed people in the village who are uh, hungry and unhappy. I don't intend to have them starve. Which is why I have the second gatherer's hut. Another thing that we could think about um, is to set up a uh, hunter. The hunting hunt. I'm, I'm sort of waiting for the tutorial to prompt me to do some of this stuff. But you can see that there are uh, deer up here. So putting a hunter's hut uh, somewhere around this area might not be bad. I could also see if there's... And yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of animals... Eh, there's some. I could also put a hunter's hut here for a little bit lower productivity, but I, I think that's actually pretty reasonable uh, productivity given the small landmass that I've got. So I'll do that in there as well. I don't know what there is to hunt. Like rabbits or something. Oh no, there's some deer. Come on, guy, there's that. Finish up. And a new objective. Prepare for winter, which is to build a woodshed. This one is timed, so it's going to be important. A woodshed splits uh, wood into firewood so that people can stay warm. Uh, so I want to put the woodshed as close to my wood stockpile as possible. Um... So I need this tree cut down so I can nestle it in there. And I'm also going to issue the command to harvest the farm fields. Knowing that uh, the prompt for preparing for winter is upon me. Uh, let's get the crops harvested for sure. This gathering hunt is just about done. And I'll put some lucky people to work in there. Here's the harvest. And we're starting to get wheat stored in the granary. So let's get a miller. Uba, you, sir, are going to be our miller. And that should pretty soon satisfy uh, first bread production. So the miller is magically responsible for milling the wheat into flour, but also makes bread out of it. Don't ask. It's magic. Uh, so they're milling wheat into bread. It's miller time, exactly. So I'm only planning to running the path out to the first gathering hut. I'm not going to run the path out to the other gathering hut or the, uh, the hunter lodge, uh, so that we don't disrupt the forest. We disrupted as little as possible, at least. Also make sure that the wheat granary doesn't actually max out on capacity because I don't want crops rotting in the fields. But there we go. Bread production is done. And now I have the objective for wool production. But I'm um, going to take a backlog on that. So right now the priority is prepare for winter. I'm going to tell my people to cut down that tree so I can actually build the wood uh, the woodshed. Oh, good. They did it, like, on demand. So the woodshed. There is other ways to, to heat your village later on uh, with coal, but the woodshed is going to be the initial way to do it. And I'm prioritizing the construction of that woodshed. We also have an immigration wave coming in um, pending soon.
I'm 37 out of the 40 for the increased village population. Uh, admitting these immigrants obviously would have me kicked up to 40 for sure, and I'm currently building the housing for the additional uh, people that want to join. Uh, preparing the woodshed, I only have two days left on, so I might want to pause construction of these houses, even though they're really, well, they're so close to being done. I'll pause construction of the last house, though, so that my builders are uh, more or less forced to work on the woodshed. And taking a look at the jobs here. We only have three laborers, so it's a pretty low amount of laborers. Uh, but that's because so many people are, are working on building right now. I think what's going on here is that this gatherer is going up the cliff uh, to gather periodically. Are they, are they gatherers? So I might want to actually relocate that. Yeah, picking fruit from the forest. Yeah, they are doing that. That's unideal. So once I have a lot of... Um... Well, actually, winter is the perfect time to relo re relocate gathering huts. Because gathering huts um, don't work in the winter. So they're not going to be yielding anything anyway. So I might want to consider relocating those to where they aren't running up cliffs uh, periodically. Because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, this is gather site. Uh, don't build that. Might have preferred to be hunting, but I think I'm going to run into the same issues whether I'm hunting there or gathering there. Where, uh, the multiple elevation levels, uh, makes it operate less efficiently. So there's only a tiny bit of crop left in the fields, and it seems like it's just starting to snow, so we're probably going to get that all harvested up before winter truly sets in. Uh, Weak Rainer got pretty close to maxing out there. I might want a second one for next year. Yeah, this is uh, somewhat similar to Settlers. I stopped playing Settlers around, like, maybe Settlers 4 or 5. I know they're up to, like, 7 now. It got ridiculous. I think. Alright, choice. Newcomers will arrive in your village. Um, do we want more immigrants or not? Left up to you. So fame will be earned, uh, but it might cause new events if we admit them, and then, you know, there's more mouths to feed if we, we do that as well. That looks like it's a yes again. So, we just hit 43 pop, five people wandered in, and I got the gold, silver, and fame from completing the increased village population. I'm going to unpause the bad house construction. And the next task is to build a shipyard and assign a shipbuilder and to go fishing. Um, the make a boat is automatically accomplished because I start with three boats. So in the tree of life, I'm going to unlock we can dig too deep. So that I can get uh, the Veg Vizier, which is the shipyard. So you can see some of the newer things that we can do, which is a stone cutter. A stone cutter is kind of like a carpenter. Carpenter takes raw wood, makes timber. Stone cutter takes raw stone, makes dressed stone. Uh, we have also got the mine. So there's a few preset locations for mines. One happens to be like right where my farm is, which is less than ideal. So it might be a, a good idea to move that farm. 
But um, depending on the color of the stone, it shows you what you're going to be mining. So this looks to be coal here. And actually, I could keep the farm in place because I could put one here, one there. Uh, this looks to be iron back there. And these are the only locations on the map accessible. And then we also have the uh, stone pit. So you can see the stone pits have preset locations as well. So there's one stone pit here and one over there. What else do we just unlock? The brewery, if we had barley. We don't have barley. And then the sea. So getting a fishing hut, which I'll put here, and a shipyard. A shipyard will build new ships and also repair ships because... Um, your ships will uh, become worn out over time. Here we go. Uh, shipyard and fish builder. But uh, preparing for the winter is going to be more important anyway. So the woodshed's still on a higher priority. Because we're going to need... Um, we're going to need... That soon. I only have two days left to start cutting. Thank you for tuning in to Land of the Vikings, which originally streamed live on Twitch September 12th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community, it also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream of another game. Farewell, my fellow Vikings. <laughs>